Iranian protesters sentenced to death for enmity against God. Nationwide protests have gripped Iran since September 16th, sparked by the death in custody of Masa Amini, a 22-year-old woman detained for quote-unquote improper hijab. Iranian lawmakers, mainly hardliners and Revolutionary Guard officers, are scrambling desperately to end the protests. On Sunday, November 6th, Iran's parliament announced that the protesters were muharib, or enemies of God. 227 MPs of the 290-seat parliament called on the judiciary to issue death sentences for people arrested during the popular anti-government uprising. Over 15,000 people have been, excuse me, have been arrested, and human rights groups are sounding the alarm on the shocking threat of mass ex executions. On November 8th, two days after the parliament's announcement, Iran's judiciary announced heavy penalties for those arrested during the protests. More than 1,000 individuals arrested connected to what the regime calls riots have been indicted. Most of the charges include, quote unquote, corruption on earth, assembly and collusion against national security, and, quote, confrontation with the Islamic Republic, charges that carry the death sentence as punishment. On the same day as the court's announcement, Branch 26 of the Tehran Revolutionary Court sentenced protester Mahan uh, Sedarat to death. So, okay. obviously, this is very important to cover. Orman, go ahead. No, just wanted to clarify that the, uh, the sentences that they're getting, the crimes, these are Quranic verses, right? So, spreading mm -hmm. corruption on earth. Uh, and enmity against God. These are literally words that are verbatim words from Quranic verses that are being used in a legal terms. So you know how we say theft, murder. There, these people. There's a crime that is labeled after a Quranic verse in Iran, and nobody knows what it really means. Even the people who <laughs> use it against people to, and it often carries out a death sentence, right? So enmity against God or spreading corruption on earth, it doesn't really have a clear definition what the hell we're, they're talking about. Even by their own and standards. Even by their own standards. Like, it just so we, you know, it's not like this willy-nilly in other parts of the judicial system. Like, for example, if you steal money or if you have corruption, there's like le specific legal terms for things, right? But when it, when it gets all political and puts the regime at risk, or so, uh, all of a sudden they have these Quranic verse labeled uh, sentences that they pass on to people, which is so weird. And and also, it just tells you a lot, right? Because a lot of people in the live chat are uh, complaining about the fact that, oh, how I can't believe that Iran has blasphemy laws and they're using blasphemy laws. Technically, this is not, this shouldn't be. This is not blasphemy, right? Like, th but but I, but I can see why people in the live chat think this is blasphemy laws, right? Because they are. The people who are being arrested, they didn't rise against Islam. I mean, not all of them. Some of them have, right? Most of them haven't, right? They're rising against the government. And they rise against the government, and they're being accused of enmity against God. God! Exactly. Okay? <laughs> like, who? Like, this is why some even some Shias cringe from the Iranian government. Like, who do you think you are? <laughs> Like people who rise up against the government, you accuse them because they see this government, okay, as the standing government for Mehdi. So they see the Islamic Republic as God's government. The Iranian regime sees its government as God's government and it sees its Velayat Faqi as God's representative on earth. Until the Mahdi comes back. And Mahdi, for people who don't know, is the Messiah figure in Islam, which is supposed to come at the end of times, right? So you standing against the Islamic Republic, standing against the regime, you're basically they see that as standing against God. That's how they translate exactly. this as. Which is ridiculous. But yeah, go on. No, I think that's that's actually really important to put into context of like how 
you know, I've been thinking a lot about how a lot of people don't really understand that the ideology behind the Islamic Republic is that of a legitimate death cult. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, Armin, my understanding is that part of the ideology behind the Velayatofakhti, I can't say it right, is that the, 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 the mullahs are preserving an Islamic state they're taking care of it. They're being the guardians of this Islamic state to prepare it as a prerequisite for bringing the Mehdi back, bringing Imam and Zimam back from occultation. Am I correct? Well, they're holding, they're standing guard. So when he comes back, he has all the tools that he needs. I don't think it's a, I don't think they see that this is a requirement for him to come back. Okay. Um, I think they just want to make sure that when he comes back, he has a standing army. He has a budget. I don't know why the person... He has a Messiah. budget! <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand how the God's representative on Earth would require... Like Seriously, they have funds. They have like funds ready for him that will be released when he comes back. But the fact... What? But if you're... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they invest on his behalf. <laughs> This, this is when this is where your home can't take it. Your, yeah it goes to like but like but like you're got like you're the mahdi you should be able to like just speak and like mountains will cr crumble why do you need like a fund <laughs> but it's like really good marketing like a marketing scheme because like in iran people's you know what is it called in um christianity is uh, the tide right tide to the tide, tide. yeah Tithe, right in Islam, we have that right, uh, which is called Khums and Zakat. Uh, but the, all of that is mandatory, like in Christianity, they don't take that away from your mandatory, like in Iran, they do it, take that it away, it depends, from you. right? On what branch but, of Christianity, to be fair, no, no, I mean, it's not legally mandatory. Oh, okay, so sure. in Iran, it's legally meant like, but but it goes directly to this fund for Mahdi, and they're like, now a lot of people get extremely rich off of it because they're like all this money is going to that fund for Mehdi for the day that he comes back but technically it's just like a free investment funds for them to just get rich off of which is crazy that's crazy oh it's the biggest God. investment fund yeah so armin yeah. i want to back up a little bit so you have been very tuned into what's happening in like iranian analytic and commentary circles right so when the parliament came forward and the vast majority of the parliament came forward and they called for the death sentences against those who have been protesting and against and just like a, the harshest sentence possible what was the reaction that you saw from the areas that you follow well so i follow I can see why the, this is, by the way, so bizarre, right? This is this parliament is supposed to be the representative of the people, okay? And the people are in the street protesting, and they were a lot of uh, regime officials. These people, right, are angry at the government that why are you not killing these people? Okay, that's imagine like imagine for example i don't know what you guys are watching from philippines or watching from india or watching from the us or canada imagine watching your parliament and the people in your, in your country are angry with the government and your parliament which is supposed to be the elected officials of your people are telling like our government is like like you would think like they would be angry at their government because they're like letting down the people but they're angry at the government for not killing they're, it's people. They're like, why are we being so kind to these protesters? It's, they're saying enough is enough. They're like, why are you not shooting them now? Why are you not executing the prisoners? They're like, there's hashtags by pro regime people on, on Twitter. I'm not going to show it to you because I think if I scroll down, I'm going to see a lot of like uh, bloody stuff, right? Um, but there are a lot of, actually, let me see if I could find some that is not that bad that I downloaded from Twitter. That a lot of pro-Iranian uh, people are like that. Said like the government is is not doing its job. Why are all these people in the street? Like, let me actually show you. Yeah, let me. This is a good oh my one, god! Right? You sent this, this to me. This is crazy. Okay, please translate. Yeah. So she says we will we will wash blood with blood. Okay. 
Um, so that means that you, the protesters in the street, have killed some of the uh, Basiji people, some of the regime uh, officials. Like, which is weird because the regime has killed so many people, and in self-defense, some protesters managed to get their hand and a few of the regime armed forces. Okay, and in self-defense, they have killed them. And now these idiots are out there like, why is the government not getting revenge of these people who are killing our armed forces, right? So she's like saying at the end of, I don't know how to translate Mama Shab, like kids glove, like what is it called when you're like handling people gently? Yeah, like kids gloves. Kids gloves. Like she's basically saying end of kids glove. Like stop, our government is too kind to the protesters. This is a government mm. that has killed more than, in, in the past two months, they have killed more than 40 children. Mm -hmm. children alone let alone the re rest of the protesters how many like susanna do you have the latest numbers of what the, how many protesters the, the latest reached? numbers is around 330 and that's an absolute minimum minimum because these are the only the numbers of the people who have been we have their names the actual number is way more than this right but 40 kids more than 40 kids we have verified names of 40 kids that have been sh shot dead or killed during these protests by the government and these idiots over here are saying Oh, why are you not being more harsh on the on the people? And including the the and but but the parliament itself, right? So the parliament came out and said, oh, 227 members of the 297 parliament seat, uh, seat parliament in Iran have called on the judiciary to issue death sentences for people arrested during the ongoing protests, right? So, however, I see based on this parliament was a very um hand-picked um parliament by the hardliners in iran right mm -hmm. so their That's why audience kind of like when you're like oh well these are supposed to be the representatives of the people supposed like, to be but they're not. are they why well, that's why i said supposed to be right that's why okay. i said supposed to be right but their audience when they do stuff like this is not iranian people okay their their audience is their base which is like people like this okay and that that's where they get their support from so they say things to satisfy people like this okay mm. not the average iranian person right however this move by them has set uh, has caused a lot of foreign governments to be like okay this is this violence is so normalized by the iranian regime because it's you don't see often a parliament coming out and being so asking for violence against his own people like this, right? So this move by the Iranian parliament has had major consequences, right? Like this, right? And this move and moves many more other moves. And this is the, this doesn't include the entire picture, right? So the US, Canada, and now recently France and Germany, you know? Germany, Germany just yesterday started to actually talk with its chest, okay? After yeah. how long? Almost two months. Now Germany is finally starting to speak out. Um, what's the name of the chancellor? Schultz Sh or whatever? Uh, Sh Sh Schultz? Sh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he Schultz, finally started Germany. to like acknowledge that what was going on which is really important there were i've been watching some videos or more like babak has been showing and translating videos of um people in the european union like flaming the eu for doing essentially nothing like they're like you know oh we in the eu we like to congratulate ourselves because we're all so tough we put sanctions against like 11 people but the U.S. is coming after them. Canada sanctioned like 10,000 people. Like, where are we? We need to get our act together and start taking action. Like, really seriously take some action. So that's somewhat positive to finally see people like really getting, um, I don't know, angry about it and calling it for what it is. Um, I also wanted to talk about, wait, where is it? One second. Um, wait, somebody is saying, somebody is saying, it will give us, Tom is saying Imam Mahdi is only in Shia, not Sunni. Not, not true, not true. Shia, both Shias and Sunnis have um, a Mahdi. Um, it's just that in Shias, it's a lot more pronounced, it's a lot more emphasized. Um, but Sunnis, Sunnis have very specific beliefs, beliefs about their Mehdi, which is, you know, uh, 
Sonny you say that Mehdi has to come back and fight the Dijal. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that, but that's not true. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, they have, both have messianic to... figures either way. Yeah, and they're both called the Mehdi. Yeah. Oh, we got a six euro super chat. Um, Grit, Grit John is saying, isn't the concept of the concept spreading corruption in the land, regardless of the holiness of the regime, so long as anyone is doing un Islamic stuff? Okay, the, again, the Quran doesn't define what does it mean when spreading when it says spreading corruption corruption in the land okay just read the read the quranic verse it doesn't it doesn't come with this uh you know uh and it, but it, with an explanation there's a lot of tafsir or interpretation of what it means but the quran doesn't make it clear so it lets you it lets like the shia regime of iran do whatever it wants with and the sunni governments do whatever they want but then anybody it's just a filler it's just like an empty vessel that you could put whatever you don't like in there which shows how idiotic the quran is which can be used like this because even like there are some muslims who will come and say like oh well this is not this is not what the quran means by spreading corruption on the land well maybe it should have specified because without specifying it can be used by anybody to make it do whatever it wants and based that quranic verse tells you that if people who are spreading corruption in the land you're supposed to cut the opposite hands and feet and crucify them so maybe if you tell people that you're supposed to crucify people who are spreading corruption in the land maybe you should have been more specific about what does that mean because you do, do you understand if you're allah if you're the all-knowing creator of the universe do you understand how easy it is for something for a verse like this to be misused i mean i can't even think of how it could be used properly but if you didn't want this to happen, maybe you should have been more clear, you idiotic, stupid God. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> um, so, wait, I, I wanted to ask you something else, though. So, what do you think about... Is my video cutting out? Yeah, you're, you, you just got... You just got frozen like with this picture. Like okay. This. <laughs> but you can still hear me? Ta yeah, I will just hold my hands like this as well. <laughs> so we're matching. <laughs> okay. Like, um, what do you think about like the risk of ma mass executions? Oh, very high right now. Um, okay. But it would be very idiotic. Do you want to turn off your camera on and off? See what happens um yeah one second there um was something else i wanted to show can you bring up what i just sent you in the private chat yes okay okay and then while you do that i'm going to it's right here my I camera okay i'm going to read the super chat while you have while you do that uh thank you again for another super chat Christian is saying well that was kind of my point armin yeah i know i was like emphasizing your point your point was a good point Thank you so much for the two dollar two euro super chat. Um, exactly, oxymoron is saying God works in mysterious ways. You don't understand. Okay, well, um, he made my brain, so he's responsible for it. Wait. Uh -huh. Okay. Your so camera I, is not fixed. Yeah. I know. I mean, we we switched to the camera. I mean, we turned it on and off, and I'm still frozen. So I don't know what. To Wait. Let me let me try doing this. Nope, I'm still frozen. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to leave Streamyard and then come back? Okay, yeah, let's try that. One, okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> People are saying Susanna, catch because <laughs> you have your head. <laughs> oh my god! Um, let me see what you guys are saying. <clears throat> okay, so somebody saying Zelensky said Russia use Iranian kamikaze drones against Ukraine do you have any info of that yeah that has been verified that has been completely verified yeah oh there we go Suzanne has my picture let me change her avatar oh, I can't change her avatar hello can you hear me I can hear you but I have no camera can I'm so sorry All right, meet yourself. So, oh, here, I'll fix it. All right, let me read this tweet that Susanna sent me. Uh, the tweet says, Sam, oh, Salman Yassin is an Iranian rapper who has been sentenced to death for protesting against the regime. There is still time to stop his execution. 
governments of the world, now is the time to act. Tomorrow will be too late. Look at this. Guys, like this is, you have the right to protest against your government in your country, but this is the, the this is the fate of the person who just simply just went out and wanted his rights. And now he's on death row. Jesus Christ. That's insane. Anyways, let me remove this tweet in case Susanna comes back. Susie? Okay, so Hello. the is is that now my computer is not recognizing any of my cameras, and I do not know why. Is there any way you could fix it? I've been trying. Oh, G GJ. Okay, sorry. Uh, GJ is saying, can you please call me GJ? Sorry, I so forgot to. Your name is GJ. Thank you again for the super chat. Um, can Bob I help you with the camera? Um. This is more of a computer issue. I don't know what happened. Do you have just like a simple webcam? No, I, I won't even, I do, and it won't even recognize that. It won't recognize any of my cameras. Uh, do you want to restart your computer? Okay, let's just go um, I mean, that might take a while though. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. let's just go like this. Okay, maybe it'll help um can can bob i help you in the background while you do this to start, start to figure out like what to do wait hold on if you go mm -hmm. to yeah you did you unplug and plug back in your camera um sorry guys give us a minute here give us a let second me see this has never happened before Is, this Okay, let me one second. All right, I'll meet you and I'll just hang it, uh, read what the chat is saying. All right. Um, wait, I didn't, this is not my fault. Oxymoron saying you told her to do that experiment and it all went wrong. What experiment? What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> do a hard reset. Yeah, that's not going to help. Anyways, let me read a little bit of this. Iran has been uh, gripped by nationwide protests that started with the anti-hijab protests and were later inflamed by the death of Mahsa Amini. Amini, along with an increasing number of victims by Iran's morality police, has uh, fueled the protests, causing them to intensify despite the regime's violent crackdowns. Yeah, I think we all know this. Wait. Yeah. Oh, fixed it. Fantastic. I don't know what happened, but I'm back. Okay, sorry, everyone. Yay. <laughs> okay, okay. Don't touch anything. Wow. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry for all that detraction. Um, what I wanted to talk about was, like, when it comes to the handing down of these death sentences, I want people to have a better idea of some of the what, what's going on. So there was one mother who came forward talking about how her son was sentenced to death. He received the death penalty after one trial, one hearing, without a lawyer, and the hearing lasted 10 minutes long. So... <laughs> This is like the reality of the revolutionary court, right? And that's all it takes. And he was sat before a judge known as the judge of death, right? This rapper in, in front of me is Saman. I was watching some of his videos today. And um, something that was really hard for me and poignant is that in his video, he it it shows him having a dispute like with the authorities, and they come and then they like take all of his property from his family, and it shows him like being interrogated while blindfolded by the regime, and then it shows him in this music video filmed I don't know a while ago, like being tried handcuffed in front of revolutionary court and i don't know it really struck me 
to the extent of like all the stuff that happened in that video, it was a dramatization. Is it happening to him for real now? And um, I, oh my gosh, it's just really, it's it's really really horrible. Um, there was some other stuff that's happened in this past week that I wanted to get your opinions on, Armin. If we do, just have some kind of chit chat analysis, so I wanted to get your opinion on something that I've been observing. Um, I've been noticing that a lot of people have started to express um, anger or dissatisfaction or frustration with people talking about the uprising as a women's revolution. A lot of people are like, no, this isn't a woman's revolution. This is an uprising for regime change. And I think they find Western media talking about this as a woman's revolution or a feminist revolution to either be like reductionistic or worst case, like reform minded. But what do you think about people being like, no, this isn't a woman's revolution. Stop talking about it like that. Well, I mean, it was a it was a woman led revolution. It's not a woman's revolution, okay. And when I said women's led, like that's maybe that's not even shouldn't be accurate. Like because there's a lot of men leaders as well, right? Um, so when I say woman, that, that was before you had the camera. Before it was better. I don't. You don't need to change it. Um, so it's. You know, the Islamic Republic of Iran oppresses and is discriminates against a lot of many different groups of people, right? Not just women, okay? A lot of the groups um, that are oppressed include men, okay? And men in Iran have sacrificed a lot for this revolution. 100%. Okay, okay? and a lot of the victims, I would say even most of the victims are well, am I accurate to say uh, to say most of the victims are men? In terms of right? who has been killed in this uprising? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It's yeah. mostly men. So it's, it is it is fair to say that maybe we're doing men a disservice if we keep just highlighting the woman, okay? Um, but you can, you can recognize that this is women have taken up a leadership role in this revolution and celebrate that. Okay, and also recognize the fact that the symbol of this revolution is one that was created by a woman. Okay, um, and women, the act of taking off the hijab by woman has become the main symbol of this revolution, and the mm -hmm. main chant of this revolution, which is Azans and the which means woman, life, freedom, um, is the main chant of this revolution. Okay, but but the revolution is for everybody. Okay, um, it's for men. It's it's not to just free women from the Islamic Republic of Iran. It's for to free men as well from the Islamic Republic of Iran, right? Um, but the only reason why highlighting women has become a significant tool is because it's the biggest oppressed oppressed group. Okay, it's not among all of the oppressed groups and discriminated against groups uh, in Iran, whether it's the Baha'is, whether it's the um, Christians, Baluchis, the Jews, the, the Baluchis, the Sunnis, the Kurds, the Azeris, the Arabs, Iranian Arabs. <laughs> they all uh, have and, women who are being oppressed. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and the average person, the average Iranian person, like even if you don't belong in any of these groups, you've been screwed over by this problem. The only people who haven't been screwed over by this regime are the the people within the regime or the or as cronies or like you know or as stooges right um but but again the one that is just the most visible okay because of the size and also because the oppression method is visible is like so visible like it's like it's kind of like putting chains on people right like it's kind of like you can see like the hijab is not itself the main thing that makes people feel like I'm not free is the symbol of I have a chain in you. I, you, you are within my control. Okay. And because it is the most 
visible symbol of oppression, it also becomes taking it off becomes also the most visible symbol of fighting back against this oppression. But we have to be careful fighting back against this oppression. It's not just about the oppression on women. Okay. We're just using this as a tool to symbolize every form of oppression in Iraq. Okay. Not just that the ones that are women. So it's good to recognize that this has been a largely, but not all woman led revolution, but we have to understand that it's for everybody, not for women. And also we have to recognize the major sacrifice of men, Iranian men and not to just reduce it to a, a, a woman's revolution. Okay. As, as Susanna mentioned, the most of the victims have been men. Okay. And it's also a bit unfair. Well, not a bit like very unfair that the, uh, the women who are killed get a lot more attention than the men are killed, the, the men who, are, who get killed, right? Um, as, as, but not, not by Iranians, by the way, because um, maybe in foreign countries, like in by Western countries, the women who get killed, they get a lot more attention. But um, Khoda Noor, which was like, is now the main huh. highlight of, yeah. So who's a man? Khoda Noor, would... like him being highlighted is like very recent though. Yes. And there was that other young man, I think his name was uh, Mehdad, the young chef. He was in yes. Sea of Us. He was highlighted a lot as well. But it's still like really just a fraction. And the whole story about behind Khuda Noor, like um, the, the details of it are not clear at all. But actually, we should talk about that a little bit. Can you pull up a photo? Because it's become like very significant, and I want people to know the context of like what we're actually saying. Give me a second. Okay. Fact, you can talk, read the live chat while I do that. Um. Ba, ba, ba. I don't know. People are agreeing or disagreeing about if it's reductionistic to just call it a feminist revolution or women's revolution. I don't know. I find it very interesting how. I've, I've seen a lot of Iranians criticize like Western media or like Oprah as an example, because Oprah was talking about it as saying that, oh, this is a women's revolution. This is a woman's movement. And I think a lot of it comes from the fact that contrary to much of America's history, <laughs> okay, the West actually does not have an appetite for regime change right now. The Western media doesn't have an appetite for regime change right now. Like, I don't think that as, as much as like anti-imperial leftists will, you know, be constantly harping about how the protests are distorted and these, these are all just calls for regime change, blah, blah, blah. And how that's like apparently a red letter, no matter the context, just the word regime change. Like, I, I actually think that Iranians in, in Iran and in the West do want regime change and are very clear about it. But Western media picking it up, they don't really highlight as much that aspect of it. I think that people don't have an appetite for it and don't the, like we simply cannot tolerate instability in the region from many different angles, but particularly like our foreign policy angle, like for the past several decades, my entire life and beyond, there's been so much instability because of these kinds of things happening. And I, Americans, don't want to keep funding it anymore. They in funding to try to clean up the consequences of blah, blah, blah. And you know, a lot of stuff is our own fault. I'm not playing games like it's not okay. But I don't know, Armin, what do you think about that? Did I make any sense? I feel like I just rambled. No, 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 you're right. There, there's a lot of contradictions between what uh, the foreign regimes are saying and what they actually want. And it's actually to figure out whether they want regime change or not 
And it's not as simple because a lot of them want and a lot of them don't want. And at the end of the day, they will want what we pressure them into wanting. So we can change that calculation, whatever that calculation is. But here, here's this picture. Do you want to explain what happened here while I find more pictures? Yeah. So um, this is a photo of Holdanor. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his last name. I think it's Lajayi. Um, and he is a Baluch man. He was 27 years old. And there's a lot of differing accounts of like what happened in this photo. So I, I will tell the details. So there are some reports that this photo happened a few years ago. And then there are some reports that this, ha this photo happened a few months ago. Um, but either way, Huda Nur was reportedly killed in the Bloody Friday massacre that occurred on September 30th in Zahedan and Baluchistan and uh, Sistan. So there's two, two different events. This one was a lot earlier when he was arrested, yes. but then, you know, maybe maybe a couple of months, a couple of years after this event, he was also part of the protests where he was killed. So this yes. man was eventually killed. Um, so he, apparently he was like part of uh, on regime's radar even before the protest happens which because this was what happened to him before but eventually he was killed yeah Go on. yeah so anyways this photo in many ways has become a symbol for the baluch people and the way in which they are downtrodden and oppressed by the regime because kudanur in whatever circumstances that this happened or when it happened he was arrested beaten assaulted by the authorities and then after all of this he was tied to this pole handcuffed to this pole in the heat of baluchistan and then they placed you can see uh, they placed like a bottle or a glass of water in front of him beyond his reach and um then they took this photo and they publicized it as a way to try to humiliate him right and, and, oh, and they send it to his family. Mm -hmm. They send a picture to his family. Yeah. Yeah. Which is weird because these this is the regime. If these reports are accurate, this would be this is a regime that <clears throat> keep ha, one of its religious stories are about Hussein, who was supposed who was thirsty and couldn't drink water, and the evil army of Yazid was like withholding water from this very from this martyr from this very uh um, from this shia imam uh, which is was the grandson of the prophet okay but he, here you can see they're doing the, the same thing to this poor man which is like from uh, the, he's from sistan baluchistan which is part of iran which has been heavily oppressed by the regime right mm -hmm. but look the way they're treating the guy with this like teasing him with this water uh, is the way that they in their stories in their religious stories the evil army had done so that's why it made a lot of people angry yeah um, so this photo of Khudanor has kind of gone viral recently and people are taking this up as a, a symbol particularly for the oppression of the baluchis but then also just the cruelty of the regime in general and um, they use it as a way to highlight the oppression and impoverishment of Baluchistan. And so in a lot of protests nowadays, you'll see people basically replicating this photo. So I, um, yeah, exactly. That's a good photo. Um, I was at a protest yesterday and there were two women who um, chained themselves to poles and took their shoes off in the freezing cold um, to replicate this photo um, throughout the duration of the protest. And um, yeah, every time I see it, it just makes me want to cry. Like that? You mean like that? Mm hmm. Wait, can you zoom in? No, I can't. But let me actually show you one. I think this is in LA, right? Yeah, that is in Los Angeles. Yeah, so people, if you see people doing this, that's an uh, um, act of protest for Khoda Nur because that's how he was tied to the pole. Um, and you can see actually a lot of Iranian... Um, 
sports. Okay, so here, like you can see people. Keep- yes, that's right. Yeah, so one another very significant thing that's been happening over the past week is we are seeing more protests from athletes, which is very significant because yeah. the regime uses like. Yeah, when when people skull, score goals in different games like beach soccer or indoor soccer, whatever, whatever, they'll use that moment where they score the goal and the camera is on them to do a sign of protest. So this right. athlete, he goes and he sits down with his hands like, you know, bound as if by handcuffs. There was another yeah, athlete. Oh, okay. This. Four sets. Wait, hold up. گل و گل اول برای تیم فولاد زرند ایرانیان آمونه که یک برسته بقیب هست کن حالا دو برسته عقب میفته اوکی یا مایا جرای I want to show you mm-hmm. something very touching um, so so this is a traditional so remember this uh, Baluchi um, this is part of the Baluchistan part of Iran so a lot of Iranians Uh, are rediscovering well i mean i shouldn't say that but this is a part of iran which is separate from the central parts of iran where it has um so this is east eastern baluchistan part of iran and the traditions are different and the dances are different and the language is uh you know the second language is different okay the clothing but, is very different But one thing, you know, when I was in Iran, in Iran, we weren't familiar with these parts of Iran, right? The Arab part of Iran or the Baluch part of Iran or the Kurd part of Iran or the Turk part of Iran was uh, uh, very distant from us who lived in Tehran, right? Uh, and the Islamic Republic, through its um, enmity towards the people, has brought all these people together, right? Like a lot of Iranians, like because the Iranian government keeps acting like I keep you together, By protecting you but no you're actually bringing us together by attacking us okay the iranian government keeps keeps telling us like if i go away um, the iran will split into many different pieces but it has been the opposite it's true so don't attack me but iranian people have realized no through attacking you we have discovered each other and we all like bonding with each other right so let me just show you like this is the traditional dance that he's dancing so this is like do you see that this is a man full of joy full of Love, there's love, so hope. many videos of his, him dancing there's so many <laughs> yeah but so let me show you one clip of him dancing without any intro without like what people did with it but look at this <laughs> Okay, so now this dance, look what this girl in Tehran, which is the central part, the central city, the, the capital of Iran. So this dance became very famous now. It's gone viral because, uh, but so many people took this video and did so many different versions of it. But this one is my favorite, okay? And this is in, you can see this based on the monument behind mm-hmm. it, that this is in Tehran, in the central city, right? So here. so yeah you can see a lot of people celebrating his so celebration of his life and the celebration of his dance has now become an official way for Iranian people to protest against the government to be like you um this is the people every person that you kill we go and celebrate and we turn them into our martyrs like are the mm-hmm. people who we go discover and you know and highlight and it's becoming such a um disaster for the regime because they they don't know what to do because they're like if we don't kill people then people will see that 
there's no barrier, there's no reason for them not to come into the street because there's nobody shooting in them. But if they shoot people, every single one of these people who die are becoming a rallying cry and a reason for a whole bunch of other people to come out in the streets, right? So they're like, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And that's why one of the chants by the protesters are for each one of us you kill, there's a thousand more that will come out. That's what they're saying, right? Um, it's really uh, beautiful. Like when you're at protests, I mean, you can see dozens of these videos from Tehran, but also like internationally, like when I go to demonstrations, you know, people are ch chanting, you know, like, from Tehran to Zahedan, like Iran is united, or from, you know, Kurdistan to Zahedan, like I will sacrifice my life for Iran. Like, I think it really shows how much people have become unified and so much more aware of all these disparate locations that have been purposefully separated by region and by culture and by language and the regime plays upon it. And <clears throat> people are, they, they refuse to buy into narratives of, you know, se secessionists, jihadists, and stuff like that. They're like, no, these, these areas of Iran that are impoverished, that have been historically disenfranchised, like, you know, they are our eyes, our heart, like we're not leaving them behind when we move forward towards freedom. Right. I think right. it's really yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So again, like as I mentioned, the regime tries to tell, like, oh, don't even if you don't like the Islamic Republic, you have to understand that if you get rid of me, these this Kurdish and this Baluchi, these Turkish uh, cessationists, they will like they will rip Iran apart and there will be no Iran, right? But then Iranian people are chanting, um, you know, just like Susanna said, from Kurdistan to Baluchistan, I sacrificed for Iran. And they mentioned Iran they, because the cessationists wouldn't want to say Iran, but they because they don't believe in the Euro Iran as a unit, right? But you can see the chance are even the Baluchis, who's, who the government uh, or the Kurdish people, who the government accuses of being cessationists, the they are chanting Iran, right? Or the I Iranians who are not Kurdish. This is actually very significant. The chant that they have is. Um, Kurdistan, Cheshmacharage Iran, right? Which means like Kurdistan is endeared, is the heart, is the love of the rest of Iran. So, like, no, we, you're not going to make us afraid of our fellow Kurdish Iranians. Like us Iranians who are not Kurdish, we love Kurdistan. It's our, it's like, and you can see chants by Iranian um, Azeris, which is the Turkish part of the Turkey part of Iran. They say like. The Kurdistan part of Iran, the Turks of Iran are telling the Kurds of Iran that they'll have their backs, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, so like they're like Kurdistan, like you know, we are we are your guardians. We will protect you. Like go go. <laughs> so it's, I don't know. It's just such a beautiful message of unity and beyond ethnic identities. You know what I mean? Like the whole the lines of ethnicity, like they're becoming so meaningless you know like you're like we're in this together through the enemy that the islamic republic have become of the iranian people all of these lines and all of these barriers are just melting away which is beautiful to see do you ever think uh, that you'd see something like this no 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 i let me tell you something suzy i have had many cessations actual cessations right that not the ones of the government in our persian clubhouse which we are oh yeah no you and, talk to Kurdish insurgents like legit insurgents <laughs> legit insurgents they say that they changed their mind they're like we used what? to be like yeah people who had their families killed by this regime okay and they were like they they were like would you rising a gut farce against anybody who's farce like they called farce people fascists right yeah you're saying how could i say that anymore when i hear Kurdistan, Kurdistan, Cheshma Chirat, Iran, by my fellow. Oh. They still say that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I will read some of these super chats. Yeah, we uh, have a lot of super chats. Thank you, guys. You guys are being very generous. Uh, Gretchen is saying, at least we can perfectly hear Susanna. Oh, yeah, this was when you didn't have the 
uh, when we had technical difficulties. Misha is saying this is, oh, wait, did I read his name right? Gray J, Gray J, yes. Misha is saying this is why I'm so against capital punishment. These people's lives for F, uh, for, for F sakes, is the, it's disgusting. Yes. Would you be against capital punishment for the uh, pro regime people who did this when the regime is toppled? That's it, you know. That's yes. Um, Varun, uh, Varun is saying any similarity to Baluch in Pakistan? Uh, by the way, guys, dance. This guy's dance looks North India to me. Oh, any similarity to? Yeah, no, they're the same people. Like the you're are you, you're saying the Baluchi people in Iran are they similar to Baluch people in Pakistan? Yeah, they're just yeah, separated I mean, by a border. It's yeah, like, they, this is the. It's the literally Baluchi next door Pakistan. to each other. <laughs> yeah, this is like they are just the same ethnicity separated by the Iran Pakistan border. And Afghanistan too. There's some of them are in Afghanistan. By the way, a dirty trick. Did you hear the government to make like this guy that we just showed you who was killed by the regime? The government, the people, the government saw that a lot of people were rising up in support of him. Do you know to to say, to try to reduce the anger by Iranians? You know what the government did? The government no. said that this guy was actually an Afghani. Like he's not Iranian. And this like made so many people angry. So like, wait a second, you're saying we shouldn't be angry. By the way, just for people who like, give me some, give you some context. The Baluch, Baluch see some Baluch is some part of Iran. A lot of people's Iranian citizenship is challenged because the government doesn't have proper documentation for them, right? They're undocumented. And, lot, and they're partially they're undocumented. undocumented because the government refuses to give them documentation when they're born because their names are too foreign. And oh, and because they're Sunni, right? So the government doesn't want to give them, make them Iranian. They're trying to like make them stateless. They're like foreigners in their own country, in the country that they're born, right? So it's easy to challenge someone's Iranian citizenship, even though they were born in Iran and lived in Iran, in Iran their entire life, right? But the government is like, oh, this guy wasn't actually Iranian. He was Afghani as a way to tell the protesters, like, don't be upset. This guy wasn't even Iranian. And it made people more angry. They're like, what are you talking about? Like, like this guy is a human being. Like, Okay, he's not your like it's just like it just shows where the regime they did a self-report on their own racism. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah, like, I oh, see. if we tell them it was an Afghan, people are too racist that they won't care. And people are like, people actually, quiet. We no, kill you're racist. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I was getting really angry, which is justifiable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The um, stuff that Afghans have to go through is brutal. Varun is saying, Armin is Baluch, not Baluchi. That is a uh, language. Well, in, in Persian language, Baluchi refers to like Iran, like, like in English, you say Iranian. In Persian, you say Irani. Okay. Like, for example, American. In Persian, you say Amrikai. Okay. So you might not say Baluchi, but in Persian, we say Baluchi. Baluch, Baluchi. <laughs> Torque. Some like, it's, you, if somebody's Turk, you say it's Turkish. We say Turkey, right? So the e, putting the e at the end is Persian. How does it um, feel to be corrected on your own native language? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't, but he wrong. Was, no, no, no. But uh, maybe it's like based on English. Maybe he's right. Like he was okay. talking. He was considering that I'm speaking English. Uh, I forget his name. How do you pronounce his name? G.J. Again? GJ. GJ saying Iran is rapidly going either towards revolution, civil war, or Shia type ISIL, um, Islamic State, Taliban, or Saudi. What do you think? Actually, that's a pretty, those, that's a very exhaustive list. It's one of these three, okay? Um, I say that last one is the least likely because these people, if you manage to get rid of the Islamic Republic of Iran, it's very unlikely for a tyrant to be able to maintain control over these people that just topple the regime like that, right? So that is the least likely. And I would say it might be a mix of number one and number two. Like you might have a couple of years of civil war and instability, okay? But eventually it will settle and you would have uh, after, if, if the revolution is successful, I would expect a little bit of instability before everything settles down and we have a proper secular well, of democracy. Course. 
Of course. Yes. Yes. Um, and GJ just gave another two euro super chat to say something to Suha, one of our moderators, saying, "My pleasure, <laughs> you're welcome." <laughs> I think. Uh, thank you. Suha GJ. was saying thank you to GJ for the super chat, and he gave another super chat to say thank you to her mod. That's very sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank don't you keep going. For all... Maybe thank you, my guess. <laughs> keep going back. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a rotating. Um, yeah. Right, yeah. Sure well, we'll... Thank you for all the support, yeah. everyone. It really makes yeah. everything we do here possible. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.